Hello guys, welcome back. In today's video, I want to do the same test that uh, Dani did a few days ago and uh, I want to see if um, I will have the same situation. She experienced um, some problems with Leka and it seems that her Leka actually raised up the pH of uh, the water and um, I want to see what will happen with uh, my orchid and uh, my Leka. We use different brands of Leka and I wonder if uh, her results are influenced by uh, products that she uses like fertilizer, pH down liquids or other things or maybe is the brand of the Leka or this is generally available because I know that Leka bits usually are advertised as pH neutral. So um, we can see here I have my little seedling Catlea Fabia and uh, the reservoir of the orchid is empty and this is the moment where I would usually water her. So um, we can see I put here some tape and um, let's see what water I will use. Here I have some reverse osmosis water and uh, it usually comes at about 7 after uh, the pH meter settles down. And here it is guys, it is at 7.1 and I will stop here. Now I want to actually add this water to my orchid. So the little cup, it is uh, all filled up and I will leave it like that for 30 minutes. Uh, I think it's all... A little bit leaking down here so uh, I might need to put a little tray behind but uh, anyway I will uh, bring a bigger cup actually I will do it right now so you can see I don't change anything so I will leave it uh, here for uh, 30 minutes and I will come back to test uh, the water that that comes out Okay guys, so now a little bit more than one hour has passed and uh, as I suspected, a little bit of the water uh, leaked out, but that is no problem. Let's see actually what situation we have. I will try to gently take the tape out. Right, so... Let's see what happened there. Okay guys, uh, it seems that uh, the pH meter already shows 8.1. I hope that shows on camera too. Uh, I really wasn't expecting that. I thought uh, maybe it is the brand that Danny uses or maybe... Uh, I don't know. Uh, also, she doesn't use the proper watering method for semi-hydro. She kind of changed that too. And I uh, thought that my that might have influenced her uh, pH. And um, But it seems like uh, it has actually not. And uh, it is indeed the Leka beads that are raising the pH. And this is... Uh, Something that I wasn't really expecting. I have a few ideas about what to do next. Uh, I will give you a little bit of background of this orchid. So um, I was watering her at a, a pH of 5.8 every time I water it. So I put fertilizer, I drop the pH with a pH uh, down solution. And um, so this thing has actually made the pH to raise so, so up. 
certain nutrients are available at certain pHs and um, I was actually to planning to change a little bit the watering method that I use and um, or more exactly the fertilizing uh, rules that uh, I applied and uh, I want right now to make that swing I was planning to fertilize the orchids uh, at uh, 4.5 pH and uh, the next time at um, 7.5 or something like that but um, or 8.5 but right now I uh, think I will actually fertilize much more often with uh, the lowest uh, pH that I can because um, what I think it is happening uh, inside the orchid pot it is that at uh, a pH of um, if I start for example um, the watering at a pH of 4.5 I think uh, that at the beginning that is actually the pH of the medium and the, of the leca and the orchids grow beautifully and um, and the orchids absorb uh, what they can at that pH and as they pass and as the reservoir uh, goes down and down the pH changes and they are um, and they can actually absorb um, nutrients at the other pHs and um, that is what I think I, it is actually happening inside the pods because I don't have any growth issues and uh, my orchids grow very very vigorous and uh, very nice you all have seen that so um, this is what I think it happens uh, usually I am watering at once every seven days and um, I think that my orchids absorbed what uh, they needed to absorb or what they could absorb at uh, a 5.8 HPH and uh, as they passed uh, they started to absorb other nutrients that were available at higher pHs. So I think we always have this uh, pH change inside the pot which is not uh, necessarily bad because uh, that means that uh, if you actually check uh, what nutrients are available at what pHs, I will try to post a graphic on the screen, um, you will actually see that certain pHs uh, are available more on the 4.5 uh, pH and certain uh, nutrients are more available at uh, let's say up to 9 pH so um, I think uh, this swing is not uh, necessarily bad and uh, it might actually be the reason why my orchids grow so well because they have this swing of uh, pH inside the water and uh, that means that uh, the only thing that I need to do it is to provide a low pH um, fertilizing solution and uh, the media will uh, actually play with that through the days, through the seven days and uh, bring it to a higher level. Time in which uh, I will water again. So I, uh, I really don't think this is bad and I don't think I will do anything about it because my orchids grow very well and uh, if uh, we think this logically it really makes sense the orchid starts let's say in the first day at uh, that pH and slowly it uh, moves up and up and up and uh, it starts to absorb other nutrients too the thing is you don't uh, want to let the pot dry out so after the reservoir is uh, gone or uh, after uh, seven days have passed you want to water the orchid again because you don't want to leave water standing uh, without being refreshed for too long in that reservoir so okay guys this has been the video for today thank you very much for watching guys if you have liked this video please give it a thumbs up and if this is the first time you are watching a video on my channel please consider subscribing to it so you can stay up to date with all my orchid videos i post videos regularly thank you very much for watching and see you all next time bye